public comment. And just Guilford, I was just in a meeting with Guilford, so he's probably heading back to his office in town from town hall. Okay, so uh, I'm going to uh, call the August 29, 2024 meeting of the Town Services and Outreach Committee of the Town Council to order at uh, two minutes after 10. And uh, thank everybody for who's being for being here on time and uh we'll start uh we have uh a quorum uh currently four out of five members of the committee are present so let's just make sure that everybody can hear me and we can hear them uh council ryan i'm here bob hegner i'm here <clears throat> i'm here okay so um we know that everybody can hear, and uh, Town Manager Balkman is uh, with us at the moment. So I would just like uh, remind everybody that um, this meeting um, is uh, being conducted by remote means. Members of the public who um, wish to um, access the meeting have been able to do so because we make it available by Zoom and by telephone. And uh, the uh, reminder, as always, is that this meeting is being recorded so that um, you both audio and video. So just to let you know that it is there. I see that, um, and I've asked Susan Wade to join us today. Susan, as we know, is the... Um, uh, DEP uh, regional support person who's assisting uh, and uh, communities and what we're doing. So um, her pre presence will be very helpful. And so I thank Susan, thank you for being here. And uh, let's just see if there's anybody in the public who would like to make public comment. Um, we always start our meetings by offering the opportunity, and I see that um, we have one person who's raised their hand. If anybody else is interested in public comment, uh, please uh, raise your hand. But in the meantime, um, Darcy Devant has asked to um, offer comment to the committee. Darcy, uh, good morning. Morning. So... Uh uh, are we ready? Yes, why don't you go ahead. Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Darcy Dumont and I'm speaking on behalf of Zero Waste Amherst. Um, we are very gratified that the waste reduction bylaw proposal is, is moving forward. These comments are with regard to the items in the packet, which just appeared there today that I know of. Zero Waste Amherst believes that the proposal should include universal curbside compost pickup uh, that is mandatory, universal curbside compost pickup, because opt-in programs simply don't work to significantly reduce waste. A universal program would have some resistance at first, but it wouldn't take long for residents to understand how it reduces their cost by diverting waste from the trash. Communities that have had voluntary programs like Lexington have moved to universal curbside compost pickup based on wanting to have a meaningful amount of waste reduction. If folks are paying extra for the compost option, they're much less likely to do it. Also, um, uh, there's no need to decide whether it's universal or optional um, at this time makes more sense to get cost estimates for a variety of options if we're sending out an RFP. Um, ZWA also believes on recommendation of our DEP Municipal Assistance Coordinator, Susan Waite, welcome Susan, <laughs> that all single to four family residences should be included in the town contract, including those who use the transfer station and that everyone should be included in the program, uh, both the hauler and the transfer station, 
Um, that way they'd, you know, with a much larger membership in the transfer station that way they'd everyone would be paying a much smaller fee and by doing so everyone would have uh, a compost bin where they could divert all food scraps including the things they don't put in their backyards uh, meat fish dairy eggs all dirty paper and compostable containers of which we have many in amherst and potentially yard waste and they'd be able to use the transfer station also, including recycling hard to recycle materials like mattresses and electronics, which they um, many residents can't do now unless they pay an additional $125. So all residents would have all the services and um, Zero Waste Amherst fears that offering the hauler program and transfer station as separate options will eventually lead to the transfer station's decline. Um, and we should at least not foreclose the option of doing that. So otherwise, the presentation looks great. We thank Councilors Ryan and Tob for their work on this and Councilor Steinberg for his work on a potential schedule. Uh, the questions from Councilors we just saw about five minutes ago but ZWA has pages of answers to questions that have been asked by counselors over the last few years. And lastly, we would urge the town services and outreach committee to be the entity to conduct the outreach needed on the proposal. Thanks very much for your time on this. Thank you for your comments, Darcy. It was um, very helpful. So. Um, I don't see anybody else in the audience who has raised their hand for public comment. I'll give it one more moment. Uh, and if I don't see anybody else raising their hand, then we'll conclude the public comment has been completed for today and um, move on to the next item and ask the town manager to present the uh, recommendations, the appointments that he's made uh, that need council um, action on council and aging and uh, energy and climate action committee. Thank you, Andy. So the first was the council on aging. We have a lot of vacancies on the council on aging, and these are the first two that we will be coming forward with as we continue to solicit membership. Um, the first person is Emily Kim. Uh, Ms. Kim is a student at um, Amherst College, um, so I'm putting her putting her forward as a one-year appointment. Um, but she has been working with seniors for a very long time, um, even though she is a college student since um, where she had early on, even as a high school student, had volunteered and a no one die as a hospice worker and a no one dies alone um, a situation a program. Uh, and as part of a death with dignity advocacy initiative. And so she's been, and she's uh, been taking class, uh, she took a class on with seniors and has worked with the senior center. So she's very familiar with the senior center and will continue to participate with the senior center. We really appreciate her perspective and the diversity that she brings. And so she, we're very excited about her uh, engaging on the council, uh, recognizing that it could be just for for a year, but I think that will be a benefit in the, as does, as do the uh, council, chair and the director. And the second person is Trisha Montgomery, who is a, a longtime resident of the town, who is an attorney, has a master's degree in elder law and estate planning, um, has done an enormous amount of work um, in the area of disabilities, but also with seniors, uh, has been the ADA representative to the Pioneer Valley Transit Authority Advisory Board, was on the board of directors of Stavros Center. So um, she brings a real strong um, skill set to the council as well, as well. So these are those are those two. And do you want me to just move on to the next set, Andy? Yes, so why don't you? And then we'll ask for questions about okay. any of the appointments. Okay, so the next set is for the Energy and Climate Action Committee. And we have two people who uh, uh, I've put forward for you. And there are three vacancies on this committee as well. Uh, so the first person, first person is Caitlin Davis. Uh, Ms. Davis is a landscape architect, uh, master's in re regional planning uh, from UMass. She works for an environmental consulting firm uh, right now uh, that's based, that has an office. It used to be headquartered in Amherst, but then got bought out. And now has, it just has its offices here. Um, and she has also served on a sustainability committee in her hometown of Princeton, Massachusetts previously. 
um, and she's um, wants to be more involved with the um, town governance and uh, is excited to be volunteering her time for this. And the person, other person is Andrew Leinig. Leining, I, I don't really know how to pronounce his last name, but um, he volunteered. Uh, he he's a person who moved here. Uh, during the pandemic, like a lot of people did, um, has a young family ex beginning to get engaged in the community, as that often happens when you're when you start to settle into a place and you have a young family. And uh, was uh, interested in being on the Energy and Climate Action Committee because of his interest in the environment. He is a, a software engineer um, who works remotely, so he's in town a lot and very available to serve on the committee. Um, so those are the two appointments for the um, uh, ECAC. Okay, so thank you. I uh, next uh, want to ask if there are any questions uh, from members of the committee and see Councillor Ryan had his hand up, but uh, Jennifer. Oh, I just wanted to, you know, they all look like terrific. Um, candidates, I, I want to ask for the Council on Aging, would this, will adding, um, appointing two now allow them to have a quorum? Yes, it will. Okay. No, no, and I thought I was, I was, didn't know when it said Senator for, um, for the Amherst College student. I thought maybe that was a faculty advisor. I was like, but so that's, I think that the Council on Aging would really appreciate having a voice from that generation. So, mm -hmm. And, and she has attended me. One of the questions we always ask, have you attended me? And she has attended uh, Council on Aging meetings. So that really indicates an interest. Yeah, thank you. So, Councilor Ryan, do you have motions? Yes, I'm prepared to make a motion, Andy, um, if if that's uh, appropriate. Um, I was going to start with the Council on Aging. And I was going to move to recommend the Town Council approve uh, the Town Manager appointment of Emily uh, Kim to a one-year term that would expire June 30, 2025, and uh, to approve the appointment of Tricia Montgomery for a two-year term that would expire June 30, 2026. Second. Okay, so we have a motion that has been made and seconded. Uh, if there's any other, anybody who has discussion, they can raise their hand. See, seeing none. Uh, Proceed with the vote. Uh, Councillor Ryan? Aye. Councillor Hagner? Aye. Mr. Taub? Yes. And I'm a yes. So uh, we have four to zero with one member absent. Have another motion? Uh, yeah, I'm prepared, Andy, to make a second motion. Um, this time I would move to uh, recommend that the Town Council approve uh, the appointments of Caitlin Davis um, for a three-year term um, and for uh, to expire on June 30, 2027, and Andrew Leinung for a three-year term to expire on June 30, 2027. This appointment would be for the Energy and Climate Action Committee. Second. There's been a motion that has been made and seconded. Uh, Hagner has seconded it, and um, no hands go up with for discussion. Seeing none, then uh, Councilor Ryan, uh, shall we start with the vote? Aye. Uh, Bob Hagner? Aye. Jennifer Taub? Yes. I'm a yes, so it's four to zero with one member absent. So I think that takes care of the um, town manager appointments that have been put forward. And the next item, which I think is gonna be the one where we're gonna probably spend the most time is to um, proceed to get back to the waste hauler bylaw, uh, program bylaw and um, try and Move that discussion along. As you know, um, where we are with this process is that the committee uh, recommended to the town council that uh, the council ask the town manager issue a request for proposal uh, 
and uh, that um, we had we made one presentation to the council. Uh, council posed a number of questions, which we have been working on responses to, and uh, the um, plan now is to try and get this back for the September 9th meeting. Um, so a lot of the material that has been added to the packet um, has been developed. Um, one was that we had asked Councillor Ryan to give some, um, do some work on uh, the, the written report, which would initially encompass the last meeting and could be amended to add uh, the discussion today but at least to get us started. Um, so that was one item. And uh, the other was to give some thought to the presentation that would be made. So um, that was part of it. And then I added some uh, pieces that uh, are also there. So we have four things that were presented. The other two was the schedule and how we could move this process forward. and sort of come up with a timeline that would get us to an implementation if the council chooses to do so, which would be done really in a series of um, consideration because this RFP is to generate information and to start the process going if we choose to implement, we're prepared to do so. Uh, so that was part of it. The other thing that I ended up doing, um, it, uh, if it, the committee finds that it's helpful um, item is uh, to try and see if we could uh, start summarizing what we can answer right away in the questions that were posed and what we need um, the RFP in order to be able to answer. So those are the items that are before us today. And um, I think we should probably start with uh, what Councillor Ryan has put forward. And uh, uh, do you want to start by uh, giving any in introduction? Uh, Andy, just do you want to begin with the, the uh, report to the council? Do you want to spend time on that? Um, uh, and then go to the uh, presentation draft. I don't. What order do you want to work in? What order does do do does the committee want to work in? Do uh, people have had a chance? I think to, to see the draft for the uh, the July twenty fifth. I think it's July twenty fifth meeting. And I guess the first, the only thing I wanted to say was none of this is written in stone. So if you have any changes, uh, I just you know so uh, uh, corrections, changes, additions. Um, so if we want to start with that just briefly, if, if there are any thoughts on that, and then we can go immediately to the presentation. Um, and then I guess we could go on to questions uh, that you did and then the schedule. I think that makes sense is uh, uh, start to see if there's agreement uh, on that, Jennifer. Yes, yeah, so I just want to thank George and I did um, during public comment, uh, George and I were acknowledged for the presentation. George did the presentation. I think it he did a great job. So I just don't want to take credit <laughs> uh, where it's not deserved. So thank you, George. So is there any thoughts about the uh, uh, what's been presented, what George did, which was extremely helpful, just to get us started with summarizing the last meeting and the discussion there? Uh, Bob? Yeah, I think both the uh, the, the draft uh, presentation as well as the Q&A uh, document, I, I'd like to see a little bit more explicit handling of yard waste, because I think yard waste is kind of dumped into recycling in some cases, in some cases it's not. So I think we should be more explicit about what we're proposing for yard waste. You know, for example, in the, the Q&A question two, how do we handle our waste hauling policy now? You also, at the transfer station, you can also dispose of yard waste. So, it, but it's not listed there. Okay. 
And wow. I don't know that we have any, the, the, the hauler, the licensed hauler USA has any yard waste uh, option. No, I, um, there, the reason I'm pausing is, is that I think Guilford is joining us. I wonder if it would be helpful to have the yard waste discussion um, when he is here. Uh, because um, as, no, as, as I uh, put forward in the proposed answers to the questions, um, yard waste now really, and you, you had cited this in the way you framed the question to begin with, um, is really about leaves and, ba um, and bagging leaves, uh, other yard waste. Um, there is no other, um, there is no home pickup option available. And, uh, so the, the yard waste has to go through the, uh, Transfer station. Transfer station. Um, Susan, you. Yeah, I just wanted to pipe in about yard waste. There are different kinds of yard waste. As you know, if you use the transfer station, there's leaf and yard waste and there's um, more shrub like woody stumps and branches and, and um, that kind of debris. And so typically when a when a curbside program includes yard waste, they're talking about the smaller yard waste, the leaf, uh, the leaf and um, and lawn clipping type yard waste. So it would not include the shrubby, woody material that um, is collected separately. And and that um, so I just wanted to make that clear, um, or at least to put that out there. Um, I also wanted just to. Uh, I, I agree with, um, I, I don't remember who it was that said it, but um, I, you guys have done a really amazing job analyzing the concerns and issues that are going to come up. And I, um, my hat is off to you. I think it's really important when you're making a big change like this to consider everything and you guys are doing a great job. Um, I did want to comment about the um, un, un George's document, which was excellent, uh, under why an RFP. I, I want just to explain some of those questions are not going to get answered by an RFP because the, the town needs to decide what they want. What an RFP is going to do is give you pricing so that you know even if we want it, how affordable is it going to be, right? So clearly the cost of the consumer and the cost of the town is going to be answered by an RFP, but questions like who's going to handle enforcement, um, customer service complaints, we want to listen to uh, haulers because they have a lot of expertise and experience with this. We can also listen to municipalities that have, have these systems in place already and learn from them. And then Amherst needs to decide what they want. And what an RFP is going to do is going to uh, help us understand what those wants are going to actually cost. So I just wanted to clarify that, um, that, that we, we're not going to ask, or you, you're not going to ask the haulers who's going to do this. You guys need to decide that and ask them what it's going to cost for them to um, uh, do your wishes, to heed your wishes. Uh, based on your knowledge of other communities that you work with in Western Massachusetts, such as your service territory, or from what you've heard in other parts of the state, is yard waste um, ever uh, included within mm -hmm. the curbside programs? Yes, it is. I can run a report on on that kind of information and and share that with you. Um, we can look at those uh, of the twenty four communities that have some kind of curbside composting. Which of those um, include yard waste, and then which ones without composting also include yard waste? My, I, that's something that we can easily come up with for you. Okay. Uh, Bob. Oh, sorry. I didn't take my hand down. 
Jennifer? Yeah, so we um, contract with USA Hauler. And so I think it's a couple of times a year when the town picks up the leaves and they provide the bags. So we always have many bags, but on a week to week basis, as we have small amounts of yard waste, we have a small yard, we we just throw it away and they pick it up. But I always feel like it should be composted. So I guess it's kind of my question that sort of small stuff you have week to week that now it doesn't go in recycling. We just put it in the regular bin. That could be part of composting. Susan? I wanted to explain that yard waste is a waste ban item. Uh, it is banned from disposal and incineration in the state of Massachusetts. So if people are putting yard waste into their trash, they should not be. They shouldn't, um, be. Okay. They shouldn't be doing that. Uh, I also wanted to add that uh, municipalities that have yard waste built into their curbside collection contract, it usually is uh, they have they have yard waste days or bulky waste days during certain times of the year during which the haulers will collect a spe make a special collection. So they they might have a, a bulky bulk waste day where people can put bulky stuff out on the curb and the hauler will collect it, or they'll have um yard waste days where the you know similar similar kind of stuff i also just want to explain that the yard waste or leaf waste collection that jennifer mentioned that's actually a dpw thing that is done so that's a service that the town provides not the individual haulers but there are some municipalities that have their curbside haulers collect the material it's just you just have to pay for it so i just wanted to make that distinction right now that leaf program is provided by guilford and his team at the dpw and um in other communities that's either they don't have one or they have to pay their curbside hauler to collect the material Jennifer? okay so this is yeah because it is the town that provides that we always put it in our newsletter and people really take advantage of the, I think it's twice a year. The town picks up the leaves. So Susan, I will stop putting <laughs> any leaves should not go in my, but, but it raises the question that the hauler is picking it up, which they, I mean, I guess they obviously just don't know. So this would, so I guess what I'm saying is moving to a new system. It would ensure we could ensure that, that, what is going in the trash cans is only what belongs there. Right. Um, uh, we have inspections of transfer stations and incineration facilities. Um, the state only has so many inspectors, although they hired um, a number, uh, they hired some new, some more. So, but um, what happens is uh, as loads are dumped, uh, they are in, they can be inspected based on the schedule of where they are that that day. So that's how waste ban uh, issues are identified. Um, lately, there's been some issues with tires, uh, which are also a waste ban item that have been uh, we've been getting a lot of tires at incineration facilities and stuff. So they're doing work to identify where those are coming from and and address that. Um, but I, I also wanted to say uh, back to the LEAF program that Guilford and his team do, I wanted to explain that um, it's actually really awesome because farmers and, and uh, composters will actually collect the leaves before Guilford um, Guilford's team um, often, often will collect leaves before Guilford's team even has to do it. So it's kind of a cool thing in a way because there's some sharing involved. Um, our farmers and composters will scan neighborhoods to find who doesn't have a lot of oak leaves and they will help themselves to bags of oak leaves for their, their composting needs. Guilford will have a better understanding of um, how many leaves are actually not picked up. But I know that in my neighborhood, when people put their bag leaves out, they often disappear before the truck even comes around to pick them up. So uh, again, not sure what percentage that is, but um, it, it's a, a nice way to get yard waste reused instead of having to be um, processed. 
So this this is helpful to me. I'm just going to jump in if I if you uh, don't mind, because uh, for me, the task is going to be to revise this document so that it reflects a the facts. And so what's being pointed out to me is that under the current system, it, it, there's some things that need to be added to make this as accurate as possible. Um, uh, so, uh, for instance, mentioning the fact that the town picks up leaves. Um, and that you can bring yard waste to the uh, you know branches and such so that just needs to be mentioned. So many of us know that, but it needs to be in here, and it's not at the moment. Um, with yard waste, uh, like flowers and 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 uh, weeds and things like that, that also is banned. I mean, what what is it? Anything that that comes out of your yard should not go into your, and that should be mentioned as well. So I want to put that in. But does that anything? I mean. Yeah, I'd have to look. I can, if you give Grass, me a minute, I, mean, yeah. I can look it up. Um, okay. uh, I I have always just um, considered yard waste, but I'm sure that there are some more specifics to that, George. Let me see if I can pull it up while you guys are talking. Okay. Um, and I think also the discussion at this point uh, makes clear, and Bob's question earlier makes clear that we, we need to make some decisions. Um, I'm not sure we can make them today, but we should start thinking about them. Um, and at some point, we're going to have to make decisions before we go to an RFP. And so that also gets into the process here. Um, I, we're hiring, we're going to propose, or I think we're going to propose that the town um, hire a consultant to craft an RFP. Um, would it be during that process that some of these decisions could be made by the committee in consultation with the consultant? Or is the consultant's job essentially simply to craft an RFP once we tell the consultant what we want? Um, so uh, that's a question. I, I just interrupt to note that uh, we need to look also at the schedule that um, I had put together and possible dates. But um, what I was thinking as I was doing that was that if we develop a as a committee a draft bylaw and then ask for um, the council to take a look at it and see if um, they have any comments on it it's not for adoption but it's the beginnings of a working document and to make sure that that's early enough in the process that it precedes the issuance of an rfp so that um, we would have um, the start of something that gives that guidance, but it would um, be work that we would need to do as a committee um, that would sort of follow um, council um, direction that they want to go forward with the RFP. The reason that there's a time lag in there is that um, and this was uh, came from consultation with uh, Paul, that if the council agrees that we should issue the RFP, that then um, funding for the consultant becomes um, something that he has to include in the um, process of once free cash is certified, that some money becomes available uh, for the consultant because it is not currently in this year's budget. Um, and so I was trying to make all of that fit together. I don't know, if Paul, if you have anything you want to add, I'd raise your hand. Otherwise, uh, we'll um, go back to uh, Bob. Yeah, I'm glad Guilford is uh, with us now because uh, back to the question about, uh, you know, the, what's accepted at the transfer station, there's a sort of a separate pile for leaves and grass clippings, but people put all sorts of stuff in that. They put flowers, they put vines, they put all sorts of things in there. And Guilford, I, is that acceptable? Is that okay? Um, or should it really only be leaves and grass? <clears throat> we try to keep it leaves and grass, but if there's a small amount in there, we're okay with it. Okay. Anything else, uh, Bob? No, that's it. I just wanted to mention that that you know, <laughs> whatever whatever rules that are there, people are going to go around them <laughs> for convenience. <laughs> Doesn't 
I looked up the waistband in um, specifics and it's leaves, grass and brush. That is the brush has to be less than one inch in diameter. So any of the real woody heavy stuff is not part of the waistband. It has, if, if it's, if it's a branch that's more than one inch in diameter, it's not specifically listed in the waistband. It's e essentially, it's easy stuff that's easily composted, <laughs> right? So. Um, yeah, I think that it's worth noting if I'm correct and Susan, you can help or Gifford can help out on this, but uh, USA Trucking doesn't use the state facilities. They have their own. So that uh, when they're disposing of uh, trash, they're not taking it to, they're using their own facility in Connecticut. You'd have to check with them to find out where the final resting place is. As you may know, they purchased the Agawam, the site of the former Agawam um, incineration facility, and they're turning it into a commercial transfer station. So um, we might assume that they are bringing recyclables that are collected at that transfer station to their facility in Connecticut, but I can't, I don't know for sure. Um, similarly, uh, with the with the waste, you know, they're going to, um, they're going to take it to the location that makes, that's most advantageous um, cost and resource wise to them. So if there's a, a landfill or incineration facility that's closer, that, that makes more sense for them to bring it to economically, they're going to do that. It's not necessarily going to go to Connecticut. It's all, yeah. So it's a question for USA. Uh, that's all right. So again, pardon my my dullness, but I just want to be absolutely clear. The yard waste ban uh, bans leaves and grass and branches over one inch from going into uh, the- uh, Less than one inch. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. Leaves and grass are okay. So what's banned, what's banned Thank you. is grass, leaves, and brush that's less than one inch in diameter. So, so other material is technically not banned. I mean, we there's a whole document on the waistbands that's you know okay, twenty pages. So we can yeah. we can delve a little deeper into it. But the the short answer is what's banned is leaves, grass, and brush that's less than one inch in, in diameter. Okay. Okay. Um... So yeah, Andy, I don't know which where you want. Oh, Jennifer has a hand up. Let's see what Jen, Jennifer. I had a question about the RFP. Should I wait on that till later? I think we're going every which way. So maybe Okay. Can so can the can the RFP be crafted to request? I mean, it can be crafted to request different options. Like someone told me there was an RFP done by Agawam that I had that. So we could we can do that. We don't have to determine because we can't. I mean, that's really why we're doing the RFP to find there's out. There's lots of different ways to do it. That uh, most recently, uh, there's a a style called they're calling the a la carte style, where you put out the you know a number of services that you would be interested in having, and it it um, can allow multiple multiple entities to. Uh, put bids in. So for instance, you could make it so that an independent organization would be able to bid on just the compost collection instead of everything, right? So you can you can craft your RFP in many, many different ways. Okay, thank you. And that's what the the consultant will help us with. We, we also, just so you know, um, MassDEP, because of their work with uh, with many municipalities across the state, we have uh, information and can direct, uh, connect, I'll say connect Amherst with other communities and, um, and the way that they have uh, crafted their RFPs. Um, and so there's a lot that can be learned from other municipalities. Thank you. So looking at Andy's schedule, what I'm seeing is, uh, answering my earlier question, there is time built into the schedule for us to uh, resolve these questions um, before the RFP is issued. And my understanding is that if we go ahead and hire a consultant, 
that consultant would assist us both in answering those questions prior to the issuing of the RFP and then would uh, help uh, would uh, draft an RFP. Is that correct? So that we will not be we will have someone uh, to assist us in 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 answering these questions adequately so that when we go to the next when they go. What, so is that person doing the same thing? They're going to help us and they're also going to do the RFP or are we hiring someone simply to craft an RFP once we uh, this committee have decided what we want. I think we're going to need help. Um, and are we going to get it? And is that what this consultant can do? That's my question. Paul? Yeah, I think I think the intent is for the consultant to help to create the RFP. He The, the, the consultant will not be able to do that independently without in a vacuum. So the, the consultants will be able to have to come in and talk to the council saying, what do you want to put in the RFP here? Are the And then have enough knowledge to be able to say, here are the options here. Here's the you know background on the information. You need to confirm what you'd like to put out for an RFP. And that, that's the goal. And that's the that's the piece. Why, why do we need a consultant? Because we just don't have the staff capacity to do that level of detail work that needs to happen before the, the, the RFP gets sent out. So again, Andy, looking at your schedule, um, we see that the RF, the consultant would be hired in December, but we're adopting a draft bylaw in November. So I think we, and we're not gonna maybe resolve this this morning, but we, I think we're gonna have to adjust this a bit because it doesn't seem like we'll be able to talk to someone uh, help us helping us answer these questions uh, until at least December. Um, and so we can't really adopt a draft bylaw until we have that person on board and we can go through it and decide exactly what we want, and that would then go into the bylaw. Is that is that so? Do we need to adjust this schedule at some point? Um, I'm looking at. I have it on my screen. I don't know about the rest of you, but I'm looking at it um, as I speak. Um, and I don't know if people can get that up in front of them or if we can put it on the screen. But um, what it shows is advertising in November, hiring in December, but it also shows us adapting a draft bylaw in November. And the council reviewing that draft bylaw in November. Um, so I think if I understand what you're, we're proposing, we're going to have to do all that first before we go back, before we draft the bylaw and bring it to the council. Yeah. Um, the one word I would be very cautious about not using is adopt, because adopt is sort of, is, is that going to be interpreted as passage? So we're working, basically we're working on a draft bylaw, but what I'm saying, yeah. Andy, is we can't work on a draft bylaw, I don't think, if we don't have a consultant on hand that we, we're working with closely to advise us and to guide us. Um, I think this was my initial concern a long, long ago, is that we have we lack both the expertise and the time uh, to do the kind of detail that's required, and hence we're going to need help. Um, we've had great help from uh, Zero Waste Amherst. There's a lot of information there, and uh but uh, I think at this stage, um, we're looking for um, someone to uh, help us draft this bylaw, not adopt it, but just, just, and that looks like it won't happen until at least December. And I'm just, I'm just describing. It could, it yeah. could be moved earlier. Uh, okay. right. You know, you're right, the dates, you know, I put in dates that seem to make sense to no, me. Right, I understand. Time, yeah. right. But uh, right. obviously, recognizing that uh, they needed to be modified. Um, Jennifer? Yeah, no, I was just um, you know, e echoing what George just said. That was the one thing that popped out to me on the work plan was it seemed that we could not draft or adopt a bylaw before the consultant came on. I mean, I thought that was why we were asking the council if we could bring on the consultant and start to draft the RFP and maybe even before we did the bylaw because we didn't have the information we needed, <clears throat> excuse me, to draft the bylaw now. Uh -oh. Yeah, I, I, this is a little bit confusing because um, it is kind of a chicken and egg situation. So the, the, the consultant can only draft what the council wants it to draft, wants them to draft. And so the council does have a draft bylaw if that's what you adopt, then that's what the consultant will build to. But I mean, what, what, you're, what we're saying today is we don't have enough information to make to really finalize a bylaw 
but I, th I thought there was a lot of energy from the council committee to get a bylaw in front of the council. Um, so I, I just think it's a, um, if you feel you need information to, before presenting a bylaw to the council, then then it would, would make sense to um, help going through the, the preparation of the RFP will define, will refine some of the answers to those questions. So I guess, Paul, the question that I have for you is, are you comfortable with, um, depending on obviously what the council decides, but um, comfortable with hiring someone who, in a sense, we're asking to do two different, two things. They're related very closely, but one is to assist TSO um, in, 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 in shaping a, a, a bylaw, and secondly, then to uh, uh, create a, an RFP. Yeah, and, and I think that uh, the key piece to this is going to be, and when we do an RF, when we, when we search for a consultant, we have to define what we're asking them to do. Mm -hmm. We have to be very precise. And the the thing that costs a lot of money is attending meetings. So those there's always the preparation, the meeting, and then there's cleanup. So every time that's consultants are very wary of saying we'll come to every meeting because um, they're not on a salary like uh, Susan and I and Guilford are. Right. Um, Right. So they they you know that's where where people run into it. it's like you know every time they show up it's a thousand dollars or whatever it is you know right. Right. So so cheap. we just want to be clear about what we're asking them to do and what the what the what the iterative process is. Yeah, the um, thing that we might be doing too is recognizing that. Doing a draft bylaw isn't just two steps. There may be more than, you know, because we do, we could begin work on a draft bylaw and then after we've had the consultant make changes to that draft. Um, you know, that's the advantage of having the draft to that it's it's something that um, you're working with, but you're going to change. And it may be that the adoption, it's not just have a draft bylaw and then issue the RFP. Maybe there's an extra step in there. The other thing that I've been thinking about in this discuss as we've had this discussion is that um, that we had a comment um, earlier from Zero Waste Amherst that the ideal would be to have um, from from their perspective they put forth the ideal would be. To have universal uh, uh, compost pickup, curbside compost pickup, and we don't know that that's feasible. Um, but we're not going to know until we issue the RFP. Uh, the reason I say that is that the communities that have had successfully universal compost have had the ability to um, work with a vendor that is available to do that. Um, in the eastern part of the state, particularly in the northeast, that company Black Earth Compost uh, does more than Martin's Farms. They, are, they, they do have a facility similar to what Martin's Farms has um, in western Massachusetts. But they also offer uh, to pick up, and um, a lot of their the towns in eastern Massachusetts that have curbside pickup. The curbside pickup is actually done by Black Earth, and uh, that um, has uh, enables those communities and the vendors that are working for waste hauling to sort of separate out those kinds of functions um, so that, um, you know, the, the fact that we don't have something equivalent out here may change what we're able to do uh, when it, but we don't, we aren't going to know until we try. Um, Susan, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, I just wanted to add that I am involved with a group of municipalities in the Northeast that are um, uh, a work group of 
of municipalities whose contracts, whose curbside contracts are coming up for renewal. And we just actually had a meeting the other day and um, uh, a large number of them are also looking with their next contract for compost collection curbside. So this is something that is, it's it's coming. People see it coming. The haulers, if they're if they're smart, they see it coming. Um, so it's it's not something that's uh, it's we're on the wave. We're on the crest of the wave to do this. It, it's it's something that other states have done, as we know. Uh, major cities have done it. So it's coming, and they know it's coming. So even though um, we don't have a, an organization like Black Earth that actually does collection, I think that haulers understand what the future holds. And I personally think that Amherst would be a perfect community to, 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 um, as, as a, um, flagship kind of community to offer for a major hauler to offer curbside, um, compost collection. It's small, it's dense, you know, it's, it's like if, if a, if a hauler is interested in doing this and, and knows that it's going to be something that they offer in the future, Amherst would be a real perfect uh, opportunity for them to figure things out and make it work and make it work well. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Uh, uh, we're not the only community who's very seriously looking for this as a curbside option. It's my understanding that USA is offering it to Amherst customers. They haven't been widely advertising it, but um, they are offering it and that they are doing the pickup and then taking it to Martin's Farms as we understand it. That's what I understand, yes. And so, yeah, but it's on a, it's on a subscription basis, but yes, they are doing it. Mm -hmm. Okay, Councilor uh, Ryan. Jennifer has her hand up. I'm about to launch into um, some very specific things. So maybe Jennifer should speak first and then I'm going to. Hey, Jennifer. Yeah, no, just getting back to the chicken and the egg with the bylaw, I would be, I think we'd all be very mindful of not having the consultant come to hours of meetings. That's, you know, we, we don't want to go down that road. But so maybe it was the word we can start working on the bylaw. Maybe the word was adopt. You know, I thought we couldn't ask the council to adopt a bylaw. They would ask what the cost was. And that's how we got to go into the RFP first. So just to put it out there, if there's a way we we could start to work on the bylaw, but I don't think the council will adopt it until we know what the cost of the program is going to be. And then I guess just putting out there, how can we work with a consultant without it being an incredible, you know, drain where they're coming to hours and hours of committee meeting. So I think it was the word adopt that was on the work plan for November of this year, that that's probably what caught my attention. Yeah, that's got to be changed. Um, I'm approaching this from the perspective of, of our eight colleagues who have not been doing this for the last uh, six months and for some of you for the last two and a half years. Um, and we're asking them, uh, at least if this goes forward on uh, the September 9th, to take an action. Um, so they're going to immediately uh, point out that there are already two by draft bylaws that we have had before us, um, and none of them are going to be in the packet. So we should be prepared uh, for that sort of sense of, you know, what's going on here. Um, you you had dry bylaws in front of you for some time, and now you're coming to us and saying, uh, we, we don't, we're not ready to, to present a draft bylaw. I think that's where we're at. I'm not right. But I realize eight of our colleagues are going to look at us with a certain degree of, of uh, well, you fill in the blank. Um, so our task on the 9th, if, if we're in agreement, is to convince them to take an action. And that action, if I understand it, is essentially to ask Paul to go out and spend town money um, to uh, hire a consultant who will assist this committee in shaping this bylaw uh, and in issuing an RFP. Um, is the, everyone agreed that that's what we're headed to um, on, on that on September 9th? And we got to get them to, to agree to do that. Is that anybody who is that 
doesn't agree. I'm asking. I don't don't because I know if I were one of those eight people, I would be looking at us with a certain degree of uh well, you, you describe what word you want to use, um, when we say, well, we actually don't have a bylaw. And we don't. Um, and uh, but if we were to meet with a consultant in uh X number of months, we would present at least one of the two documents that we currently have um as a place that we would start and we would start there. Um but so just be ready. We need to be ready and we need to have our argument clear. So will a question be, will they, how much would we be appropriating for the consultant? No, I don't think it's going to be about the dollar amount. It's just the, th I mean, maybe, but I think the question is just going to be, are you, do you want to spend some town money to uh, forward this uh, proposal that, that we are presenting? Um, and uh, I think Susan makes a very good point. I agree with her. I think this is the way things are going. I think it's, the, in other words, curbside uh, composting. Um, I think it's what we should be doing. I have some reservations about mandating it. Um, but right now, as was pointed out earlier in the comments, uh, we don't have to decide that today. And we're not. Um, we're simply saying we want to move to that uh, goal of curbside composting and a number of other things. So I'd like to go back to this presentation document because um, I need to make sure that you all agree with what's in it. I'm already making some changes to what the current system is. That has to be improved. Um, the initial paragraph is an introduction. It would not be, so my my thought is this would become a, a PowerPoint um, and uh, it would be mostly text. I'm not very good at pretty pictures, um, but essentially something that the counselors can look at as we take them through uh, basically what's the current system, uh, what are we proposing, uh, why do why uh, should we change the current system? And why do we need an RFP? And then next steps. Um, so uh, that first section, Roman numeral one, is simply spoken remarks. I would not put this into a PowerPoint. I would simply read something to this effect as an introduction or somebody. I don't care who does it, Andy, me, whatever. But essentially telling them this is what we're doing. We're asking you to consider a number of important changes to the way we deal with waste. Um, and, and we're church, urging... Um... Andy. Let me get here. Why don't you keep why don't you lead the discussion for a minute in that direction? I'm gonna have to take a break for just a second and I'll be back. Okay. All right. So I'd like you to look at that first paragraph and, and uh for instance, I would make a change to it right now, essentially uh, based on the discussion we're having this this morning. Um essentially what we're asking is that uh that we ask the town manager to uh, hire a consultant to do two things, to assist us in finalizing a bylaw and to create an RFP. And it's not two consultants, just one. <clears throat> so that that part is gonna go out. We're just talking about hiring one person um, to assist us. And our argument is this is the right, this is the direction we wanna go in. And we hope that you agree with us. Uh, curbside composting, et cetera, um, improving our waste system is something you think we should do. And if you agree with us, then this is what we're, we're gonna ask you to, to do tonight. And then we're gonna make the argument. So what's the current system? I, I'll improve that, but essentially briefly, just, just reviewing that with people, because we can see even we sometimes have questions and, and some confusion about what the current system is, and then what is being proposed. And so maybe we should focus on that. But first, that first paragraph, it, it, are you all in agreement with me that that's, uh, there needs to be some edits here, but essentially we're asking for a single consultant to assist us in these two tasks. And in the presentation that will follow, we'll, we'll make the argument for why we need that and why we should be going in this direction. Um, so. but would that be a time maybe just is going back a few more thousand feet that this, um, if I'm correct in my history, that this came from the Board of Health to the council. So, I mean, just sort of framing it that way, that it wasn't just something we dreamed up one day, but the Board of Health, you know, and if you want to go back to zero waste Amherst or the solid waste. Um, that was a, my that, yeah. I certainly thought about that. And I, at this point, I've taken it out, but that's the history uh, of this. And I felt for the- Maybe a time. sentence or two on yeah, that. Okay. So just so they know well, it's the not just that- the his, To go back to the history, the history you start with the Recycling and Refuse Management Committee. Right, it goes with- was that. meeting when Susan was working for the town of Amherst. And uh, that committee- developed a recycling and refuse I, what was the, I can't remember the exact title but it was a, something like re, refuse and recycling management plan master plan 
Yeah, actually, it was it was requested by a, a select board. The select board liaison to the Recycling and Refuse Management Committee said uh, that we had just done a master plan um, process with consultants and solid waste was not part of it. So it was suggested that we do something like that and take a look at and and make our recommendations for what we should do going forward. So that's that was the catalyst. Right. And, and then it and did the court, come from the, the Board of Health, right? I mean, it wasn't no, just the that board of health eventually, the Board of Health then supported its plan conclusion. But you had you can't say that the Board of Health started it because it was supporting a plan that was adopted by the refu uh, by the recycling refuse management committee. And then the um, the plan was. Um, accepted by the select board, but wasn't, uh, but adoption was not part of the select board um, action at that point. So, uh, but the, the Board of Health supported it, but it was not the author of the um, or create. This, this is what I don't want to get into. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't want to get into but, that, but just I, that it came. I, I understand, but it'd be nice to say something about the history of this, but you can see what happens. Uh, it's a long and complicated, it's got, right, and it's got lots of moving parts, and any attempt is going to leave certain things out, and you don't want it to be too long, but I'm, I'm certainly willing, I have the time between now and September 9th, to construct a short, what, uh, two or three slides? I don't know. I'm trying to, you know, present it to right, my yeah, colleagues. Yeah, no, I know. I way. just... Right. And I, I'm, my thought was, if they want to discuss history, fine, but I'm not going to talk about it. And I'm hoping they won't. Um, but I, if, if the rest of you say, no, we should say something about the history of this, then I will put, and with Andy's help, and, and you know, we'll put something together. Um, but my thought was just launch right into what we're, you know, why we're here tonight. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. You can see it gets complicated with the history. Um, that doesn't mean we shouldn't do it. But it's going to be very selective and I want to okay. make it as short as possible if I do it at all. I also thought, thing, I thought, I'm sorry. Go ahead. You know, the other thing to recognize is that the core elements of what we continue to talk about arose from that plan. They were, they're all in that plan. So that the question of um, compost, uh, for example, and as you throw and town contracting, those three elements were part of the uh, plan developed by that committee. And uh, so, so my thought, Andy, is if people have, if counselors, the other eight counselors have questions about that, you would be well positioned to answer them. But I don't see why I should lead, why our presentation should go back into the history of this. Um, and uh, if, if people have questions about it, you, you can speak to it far more authoritatively than I can. Um, I, as I said, I'm willing to spend some time crafting a short history of this, but it's going to take up time and it's and people are going to, you know, so my thought is just don't even touch it. Let's get right into what we're trying to do tonight. And if in the course of the discussion, questions come up about, you know, how do we get here? How did this happen? Then I think I would turn to you. <laughs> I mean, I have some notes, but um, do people want me to make a brief historical? Susan, go ahead. Uh, I might suggest that you just you just um, you just introduce it with that that um, compost and waste management has been has long been a um, has long been talked about in the town of Amherst. You know, and and that's all you need to say. This, this, this is not new. This right, is not a new right, issue. Right. And and then just move on from there. That's what yeah. I would suggest. Okay. But do make some acknowledgement that this has been around for a while. Okay. All right. The other thing is, uh, uh, I, I am just going to, if I may, <laughs> um, waste often gets overlooked. And and I often say that um, energy savings is kind of like um, waste management and recycling is kind of like an aging hippie in people's eyes. And, and energy conservation is this kind of young college co-ed who's like perky and cute. Right. And, um, but, but materials management is also climate action. So yeah. um, it, 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 it often gets overlooked uh, when you look at um, wasted food and its impact on the climate, when you look at ways that landfills are, I mean, there's lots of different ways that it does make an impact. And so um, 
I just wanted to add that, that you might might also just mention that as well in your That's introduction. Good. Thank you. So in the brief introductory remarks, I should say something about the, the, how long this has been around and how important it is. Um, but no, I'm not going to put it in any slide or get into the details. Good. That makes sense to me. Um, the current system section, Rob, I'm just going to go through this with you as quickly as we can. Uh, Jennifer, your hands up. Did you have a, a further question? Uh, yeah, no, I just think there's two great quotes. Uh, we just got a second one from Susan, that materials mm -hmm. management is also climate action. But I have I hear feedback where there's some concern about composting for people that don't compost and the compost pickup that we're maybe going out on a limb. So I think what Susan also said before that that we are on the wave, <laughs> that curbside compost pickup is is good. the wave of the future and that we're not going out on a limb. Good. Get that. And it's been good. Okay. So my job will be to put some of that in a couple of short sentences. And I think it's important um, before we launch into the, the, the meat of the presentation. Okay. All right. Um, what is being proposed? Um, I have a problem with item three, but let's do, I don't want to, we want to get through this, but um, essentially we're proposing a waste a con contract with a waste hauler. Um, okay, everyone's okay with one. Um, these would be in uh, a PowerPoint, I assume. I've just put it up on the screen. Um, and again, if later after today you have further concerns or questions, you can always reach out to me, but that here's where I would get into a PowerPoint. Um, and just list the, the specifics as much as we can make it. Now, obviously we said repeatedly, there's a lot, it still has to be determined. That's why I'm gonna ask for the, the help of a consultant, but here's the core of what we are proposing. Uh, we'd have a robust pay as you throw system. How that actually would be structured, we, have, we don't know, but we want one, okay? Uh, three, I have a problem here. Um, both Andy and I looked at this, but I, the bylaw would either provide compost collection I just, I, what did I mean by that? What do we mean? By that? <laughs> um, somebody help me here. I, I took it. I, are we, do we want to put in universal composting? Let's start with that. Or we just want to say that we, we want curbside composting, whether it's mandatory or not, we're not ready to say yet. And I don't know what the first sentence or clause means, and I think I must have wrote it, wrote it. Maybe I don't know, but does somebody tell me what that first? The bylaw would provide compost collection. The bylaw doesn't provide compost anyway. What, what am no, I saying? I what think that we're pretty well at the point of saying uh, compost collection is envisioned as an essential, essential element, of, right? Um, right. So something that program, right. the question of universal um is the the piece that we still need to have some time to work with because you do get into the question if you're going to have if you're going to take that step which um that public com uh, darcy's public comment was uh speaking to which is universal then is it feasible and how do you uh, enforce it if you do? Um, and I've actually was looking at other towns. Um, she mentioned uh, uh, Lexington. Uh, I haven't seen anything that Lexington has made the decision, certainly has not implemented a decision to make it universal. Um, you and Susan had done um, asked somebody within her department and I think came back with a different town, which we Hamilton, know, Hamilton yeah. which has yeah. adopted it. And I can actually um, send you um, to something on the MMA yeah, we have it. website that talked about it. So uh, th this should read the bylaw would uh, provide for curbside collection of compost. Something that uh, way. If I if I might just pipe Thank in you. here for a minute, I you. um, you know, I think mandated composting is is great and important, and what you're proposing is a lot of change all at once. So I would encourage Amherst to consider a phased approach, um, which could certainly be delineated in the bylaw. 
um, but you don't have to go to mandatory composting on day one. You can you can make it composting available or uh, accessible to everyone and give them all a bin on day one. But the mandate can come a year later. You know, I mean, or 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 whatever. You know, it doesn't have to happen on the same day. You know, it's it's clean to make that happen, but it it may not be the wisest choice given all the other changes that you're talking about implementing. So I just wanted to throw that out there that you have you have choices about when this happens um, and and you don't have to do it all uh, on day one. So back to the wording of three. I need help and I don't want to spend too much time here, but we need to just make a decision. Um, I am sympathetic to Susan's point. Um, I think I simply want something to the effect that um, we want some sort of uh, a curbside compost collection. Can, can the RFP ask for pricing for both? You know, if it's universal versus opt-in. And I think Susan's suggestion about having it be phased is excellent. I, th I mean, I just think that would be much more... It, Community there, be... I mean, there are different ways. There are different ways to to structure it, but um, uh, yeah. I mean, you could you could you could start off with an opt in program and then move to mandatory, or you could give everybody bins, and it's their choice whether they use. I mean, there's lot, lots of different ways you could approach it. I think the key is that the message that's sent to Amherst people is that uh, uh, diverting organics from their trash is an important move for many reasons and that um and that's something that this this the, the whole town um stands behind so so that needs to be communicated in the bylaw and and preferably steps of how you're going to get there soon but um I, yeah so three is simply, we are saying to the council, we want some form of curbside compost. And we're not getting into any of the particulars uh, because we're not ready to. And if people have questions about it, we would answer along the lines that Susan has suggested. But this should be, this is item three. Curbside I would say, what if you said something like curbside composting available is available to all participating in the program or something like that? with with um with future requirements you know to 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 be delineated or something like that okay but but the point is available to all so there's curbside composting available to all and then if people have questions we can we'll tell them we're, we're working on it you know we're happy to hear your thoughts i mean maybe our colleagues will all say we want mandatory composting everybody must do it Right. Uh, and and I'll, I will say available to all at no extra charge. Right. Well, right. I don't because that, I that's the incentive it. then, right? right? Okay. Because then they can have a smaller trash bin and pay for a smaller trash bin because they're diverting. But see, a phased, um, Susan, a phased-in program currently, if we went that direction, which is possible, um, USA is going to charge you for that. They're not. You're not going to get it as a as a one price for all. You'll get uh, they'll you know they'll provide curbside composting, but you have to pay them fifteen bucks. And uh, yeah, so I think right now yeah. all we can say is curbside composting available to all. Thoughts of the rest of you. I mean, Susan makes a good point. I'm suggesting we just say available to all. She's suggesting available to all at no extra charge. We're making a, a commitment there, a promise. I'm not sure we can keep it. Um, well, what if you said is available to all with additional uh, stipulations to be determined? Uh, with additional stipulations up to and including mandatory recycling to be determined. Just an idea. There are various communities that have different approaches to this, you know, because I did look at the website of almost all of the communities that have um, that are listed with DEP as having um, curbside service for composting. And uh, some of them provided for anybody who signs up, some of them 
there's a charge to the people who choose to participate. Uh, one of them is mandatory. It's sort of like there's a whole blend of possible. Right, there are many different ways it can I be don't done. Think, you know, are we really ready to make that decision yet? No, no. I don't think we are. So we just want to put out there that curbside is um, something that we need to be doing and that the details will follow. Will follow. And that, because um, we're trying to convince our colleagues that, that this mm -hmm. is a key component. And we don't want to get into the, the particulars. If they want to raise them, we'll we'll talk about it. But uh, we just want them to agree with us that this is the direction we need to go in. And the rest of the details, we'll work it out. Um, so I would just say available to all. Bob's nodding his head. I don't know what Jennifer thinks. Yeah. And, um, I hear you, Susan. Um, yeah, no, that's why we want to retain the consultant. And then the yeah. RFP will tell us what it, what it yeah. can be offered at different costs. I want to someday to go to a system where everybody does this um, yeah. and it's expected. And if you want to call it mandated, but I agree with you, we can't, I don't think we can do well. Well, well can, but is it, it um, George, are you comfortable saying that um, with additional um, requirements up to and including mandatory recycling um, to be determined? I mean, I, I think it, it, it kind of gives parameters and it gives a, uh, you know, where we could go and where we might go, but n no promises. Again, I'm reluctant to go there. I just would say if people can ask questions about it. We can talk about it. But um, right now, I just want them to all agree that this is, we want to go to this, this in this direction, universal, excuse me, curbside composting available to all. Hmm. So that's where I'm going to leave it unless I hear it. Bob? Yeah, I, 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 I agree with you, George. Um, I, I think if we bring up mandatory or you know some sort of enforcement, it's going to scare people off, and oh, it's going to break loose. Yeah, it's going to be really bad. <laughs> um, I think we need to ease into it, as you suggested, Susan. Um, I think we need to, you know, it may be that we eventually get there, but right now, my you know my kind of feeling out constituents are people are kind of like as long as it doesn't cost me more i don't care what happens <laughs> uh, but um they're not ready yet to really think through what it means for for everything and th this is a big change for everybody so and quite honestly we're not there i mean let's be honest we're not there okay um so that's why i want to keep it open uh can we go to item four i'm sorry jennifer no it's okay it's just gonna so the next one is the transfer station stays open as an alternative for those who wish to dispose of their trash, recycling, compost on their own. Now we definitely yeah. that has to be there. That that it is important. And the only thing that we need to recognize as a committee and decide what to do with is the fact that uh, we don't know whether um uh, eliminating the transfer station as an option what, so that it would increase the number of households that then are participating in curbside and whether that will reduce the cost per um, household and that's something that kind of has to come out of the RFP process I think. Susan? Susan. Yeah. Sorry Bob. Well, one of the things that I had proposed, um, you know, so you have to balance um, in order to get a good price, we we want to be able to have a good number of participants in the program. So it's, it, you know, you're not, you can't make this a mandatory program. It has to be an opt out type program. Um, and so you 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 know uh, what options you have to, you don't have to provide an option but you kind of you need to make sure that there's an option available to people for if they choose not to participate in this program what i had suggested at one point was that um because the transfer station is run with an, an enterprise it's funded through an enterprise fund um if we built a small amount of um 
if, if everybody who participated in this town contracted program contributed, um, say, I don't know, $10 um, as a transfer station access fee, um, at, if that amount was added to their annual amount, that amount could go into the enterprise fund and fund um, operation of the transfer station so that they had access to special items, right? Not necessarily, I'm not, um, and, and this is something that I'm sure Guilford has, um, uh, Guilford and Steve will have lots of information and expertise to talk about, but you don't, it doesn't, the transfer station doesn't have to be, um, the ex run the exact way it is now. Mm -hmm. So for instance, you could eliminate the trash and recycling collection, um, you know, the uh, uh, commingled type um, household recycling collection, and it could just be a, a, a place for excess bulky waste and special needs materials, right? And so if you built in a small fee into the, uh, the annual amount that residents pay, they would then have access to the, it would fund the transfer station and they would have access to the transfer station for things like woody stumps and um, uh, uh, automotive oil and, 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 you know, I mean, like all those things that mo many community, many households no longer don't have access to right now because they're not willing to pay the, the transfer station permit fee. So it would essentially make the transfer station there for everybody or help make it for there for everybody. If people are not involved with the curbside program, then they would have to pay a separate fee to have access to the transfer station. So it was just one way to potentially um, keep the a really robust transfer station. Amherst has one of the best transfer stations in Western Mass. And... Um, mm -hmm. It's, you know, does it have to live the way it exactly the way it is now? No. Would it be a shame to lose mm -hmm. it entirely? In my opinion, yes. So, um, th th yeah, I just wanted to throw that out there that that was the that was a concept that I had floated. And I think that that um, Darcy had referred to at the beginning of this call of this meeting. So to make that option. um to make that a little more clear that it, it won't necessarily be, uh, you know, that, that changes might be made to the transfer station, but but that we, we that open. this, yeah. you would want it to remain open. What if we just said transfer station would remain open and leave it at that? Or I could, I mean, again, I just said throwing it out there, but I, we definitely want transfer stations to stay open, but you make an excellent point that, that the form it will take, the, 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 this, what it will look like could be very different depending on what we finally decide. Yeah. And at the point where we can decide, you're suggesting that that maybe those two, so one could be it stays as it is where you can dispose, it's a kind of an opt-out, and the other would be, um, and then you get into the, the details. I'm not sure how much I want to get into it, but essentially, mm -hmm. they, or maybe you could just say, uh, yeah, I'm looking for guidance here. From yeah, the, I mean, the, the uh, you know, just just one more, more thing. The hours yeah. could change. You know, maybe it's only available open on Saturdays and Sundays for a few hours. Mm -hmm. um, also, Guilford has said, uh, mentioned this in the past. It's possible that a hauler would be interested in having access to the transfer station as an aggregation site where they could have a semi-tractor trailer of something and, uh, you know, collect it there so that um, they don't have to drive all the way down to Springfield um, each time they have a full truck. So I mean, they're, they're mm -hmm. just, it, it gives us options too. And so it'd be a shame to, to you know, I, I, I just don't think it's a wise idea to say that it's going to close or, you know, make a decision at this time. We're certainly not going to do that. What this says is it stays open. The question for my colleagues is whether they want me to uh, um, add, you know, something to the effect that its final disposition is to be determined, but we're committed to keeping it open and maybe not get into, here I offer it as an alternative. I thought of it as an opt-out. Um, do we want to include the opt-out or we want to just say it's going to stay open, but it's final, uh, you know, what it finally will be doing is, is going to be determined. Mm -hmm. I think the prepared. latter. And so vague, just don't, so maybe take out the opt-out yeah. and just say it's going to stay open and uh, through the pro through the RFP process, we will determine what its role is going to be. People okay with that? 
I'm good with that. Any thoughts? Anyone else? Susan, anybody else? Andy, Bob, Paul? I'm okay with that. I think the opt-out is important because you uh, want to keep it in? I think we have to recognize that um, one of the things we have to get to as part of this process is where we have the community engagement. And if we have several thousand households that regularly are using the transfer station and you're not, you know, our intent is not to continue that option available immediately you have all of those people are saying, hey, wait a minute, we don't support this. So we don't. We but being honest, Andy, we're, 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 it's that. open. It's open. We just don't know. We just don't know. And saying that it's going to be open and it will provide an opt-out option is uh, perhaps more than we can actually a commit to as a group and b honestly commit to because we just don't know. We don't know how it's going to play out. As Susan points out, there are a number of different ways it could go. Um, if I write it the way it is right now, it sounds like it's going to stay open as an opt-out. And I, I will write that if that's what the four of you or the rest of if the majority wants that, that's what I'll write. Um, but what I'm hearing from Susan and what I'm thinking is that that's actually not necessarily the way this could play out. Um, and we should be honest with our colleagues and with the public that this is to be determined. Your concern, Andy, is that could frighten people and they would say, well, I'm gonna, I mean, because I, I use it myself. Um, and so I, 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 you know, I would be concerned. But Susan offers a, a scenario where um, that would address a lot of my concerns. So I think, okay, fine. Um, again, do you want, do people want the opt-out in? I'm saying no, let's, let's just keep it. Um, transfer station stays open, it's final, uh, you know, role is to be determined. That's just one. And the rest of you, Susan, I'm sorry, hands up, go ahead, Bob. Well, I just wanted to say uh, about 2,000 uh, permits are sold each year to the transfer station. We have no idea what percentage of those permits are, are from people who actually bring trash and which are not. Um, I think a, a better way, in, and we could probably get Stephen Guilford to um, ferret out this information by finding out the number of permit holders that actually purchase pay you throw bags. I think um, I know a number of people in Amherst purchase transfer station permits for the other services that are offered, and they may already pay for subscription service, but they want access to uh, leaf and yard waste, or they want access to the composting. So that's part of, you know, like I say, we have a great transfer station. So we don't know what percentage of people actually use the pay as you throw program as their primary way, but we could probably ferret out that information. Uh, yeah, I would just, I. I'm I'm one of those people who uh, uh, has USA pick up my trash, but I use the, the transfer station for other stuff. Um, and so anyway, uh, I, I think we should, if we're going to include um, opting out or our alternative, I would say initial initially it'll be an opt out. Over time, we don't know. I mean, that's just reality. We don't know whether people are gonna to wanna to maintain it as an opt-out or whether we can evolve the transfer station into something else. Um, I, I think only time will tell, uh, but I think we should not imply that it's either gonna stay up op, an opt-out forever or that you can't use it for an opt-out uh, on day one. I, I think either okay, one- she, right. I, I like George's idea of just leaving it simple. Yeah. This, this is the painful process that you do when you wordsmith like this, but I don't see how we can avoid it because uh, now, Susan, I'm kind of heading in the other direction, listening to Bob, listening to Andy. I'm thinking the transfer station would remain open uh, in, in the short term, provide blah, 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 as it's written, but its long term, uh, you know, uh, function is to be determined. Well, so. something to be con just just to cons I'm, I, I'm not um, something to consider is that haulers are going to want a maximum number of, of households to participate. 
Right. So we want people to sign up for this. And I'm not saying that we, you know, we should close the transfer station as an option to force people, you know, that's not where I'm, I'm headed, but I'm saying that if you, um, that, that, the the language here is important. We don't want to promise that the town of Amherst is going to provide um, a, a, a you know a perfect option for people who don't want to participate in this program that we've deemed is is um, you know right. appropriate for the right. town. So yeah. I, I I that's why I'm hesitant to to adding that opt out. I I don't know if it's the town's responsibility to provide that opt out to people and in some communities um you know a different subscription service might might be offered you know that doesn't include composting i would find that very hard to believe that it would be cost effective in the long run but there are lots of different options for those who opt out it doesn't have to be the transfer station and uh, so I, I i think just leaving it simple allows for a lot more flexibility <clears throat> I think Jennifer's we need to yes, uh, Andy and Bob. Bob? Yeah, I'm good with that. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to keep it simple. Thank you. Next is a program will be phased in beginning with single family. This is something, right? Um, homeowners associations, can we get that term out of there? Yeah. I think we do get the term out of there. I think that the... Um, answers to the questions that I drafted, I tried to work that out because it's really right. wasn't. I can go back to your answers. And what we're really we're really saying is right. Right. homeowners association that was probably referenced was something like a, a condominium development yeah, condo association. Has, um, a common trash system. No. So I, really, I really like Paul's suggestion. I don't know what the rest of you thought, where you would say it's phased in beginning with those who get curbside service and then over the following years would be extended to those who get dump, who use dumpsters. Is that too simple? Is that would that work? Is that better? Or do you want to keep it the way it is uh, taking out homeowners association? I kind Can of we like call it idea. condominium associations and those who use a common dumpster. I mean, just to. I Sorry. think the, the yeah. thought is that apartment complexes, businesses, and homeowners associations all use dumpsters, right? Well, no, because the homeowners association, apparently Amherst Woods yeah. has a homeowners association. Right. That's what got confusing. Okay. And they, they all they, they have... I'm sorry. And co-housing, is that considered... Do right. they have yeah. dumpsters? Or right. I'm, I'm not sure how, how their trash works. So maybe we don't even we just say it begins with single family and two and four unit residences and over three years expands to everybody else. Expands to other other uh, residential entities. Okay, expanding to other residential entities. Okay, is that acceptable? And you don't. I mean, Paul's idea of dumpster versus uh, curbside service. We're not going to go there. We're just going to say as it is um, and to other residential entities over three years. And three years is an arbitrary number, I, but that seems reasonable. I don't know. Maybe be less, maybe more. You could say three to five years, but, um, yeah. you know. It... It's again, so, okay, we'll leave it where it is. Okay, six. Uh, Jennifer, sorry. I just said, no, at some point, do we want to include businesses in? Well, at the moment, the language does have businesses. Okay. <laughs> it says expanding to apartment complexes, businesses, and, uh, well, I'm sorry, if we use, uh, no, I'm sorry, if we use Susan's language, uh, it's just other residential entities, and so your point is well taken. Um, do we include businesses or not? Yeah, I don't know. I think we should. I mean, down the road. Yeah. I mean, there, someone also made the point, I don't know if we want to get into it today, but uh, what about the town? Uh, in other words, the town isn't really uh, leading by example. Um, schools, public spaces, town hall, et cetera, et cetera. Um, maybe we'll have this discussion when we get to uh, later in the process. But uh, um, I would almost want to put in and the, the, and the town of Amherst. But anyway, um, so. Uh, with uh, regard to businesses, I'm, yeah. I'm sorry, George. Sorry. With, re ahead. with regard to businesses, 
Are you saying that the businesses, I mean, we don't want to get involved with commercial hauling, commercial trash reduce, reduction. Right. I think the businesses are in there because we were talking about requiring businesses to compost. Right. I don't, I'm, and correct me if I'm wrong, no, but really. we don't, you know, we don't want this town program to usurp the commercial uh, uh, relationships that haulers currently have in the, in the town of Amherst. It was, it was my understanding that the businesses were thrown in because we were talking about potentially expanding the composting to businesses, mm. but would they be, I don't think, would they be part of the residential compost collection mm. program or would they just be, be outside mm. of that required to compost Right. you know, and under separate. So, so we, we might want to make that distinction. So five should simply be about other residential entities and um, you could put in a clause and businesses would be expected uh, through their commercial uh, contracts to also compost something to that effect. That's well, you know, it, it occurs to me, wouldn't, wouldn't that be a uh, board of health thing, a regulation to require commercial entities to compost that's that that doesn't necessarily have to have anything to do with the bylaw does it so it would be but of course part of what we're trying to do is is as as a community yeah. is make sure that this happens but your point is you can do that through board of health regulation um not necessarily through this bylaw so we just it just wouldn't get mentioned at all it would just be this is all about residential it's it, yeah. I mean, this it's your it's your call. It's it's you guys. Well, sponsors, speak up. I don't think we're ready to make a decision to move into businesses. Uh, okay, good. So it, it's, um, it's going to be board of health. Yeah, right? I think we would just be mobilizing. Maybe. I mean, we do want them to. Okay. You know, we we want there to be townwide composting that's the direction we're moving in but um and you know, we're not looking to that. we're not looking to uh mobilize opposition because it's murky from the business community right now commercial enterprises are required to source separate organic waste if they produce one ton or more per week one ton, yeah, okay. yeah so so already they're being addressed through state hey, guidelines hey. and and that might you know, who knows it could change again in the next five years we don't know uh good uh then we'll leave it at that uh six haulers provide an annual report to the board of health and the weight of tons of trash recyclables and compostables collected within amherst and finally, again, speak up or just yell, but advantage in awarding contract would be given to those haulers who would uh, dispose of compost locally. Uh, we need this. I mean, I don't really care one way we do. Okay, good. There's there's a there's a climate impact. I mean, it's it's the it's the heaviest portion of of right. MSW, and so yeah. if it's going to be shipped a really long distance, it just doesn't make a lot of it makes right. much less sense. We want it processed locally if at all possible. Good, good, good. All right. Um, again, trying to move along. We we really time is of the essence here. But why change the current system? I try to identify six reasons. Um, we can jigger the order. We can, maybe there's some repetition, but essentially the first is, uh, has to do with greenhouse gases. The second is to reduce our dependency on landfills. Now, Andy's pointed out that some of these statistics are debatable or questionable. I could take the statistics out and just focus on the, the, the core reason. Um, right that we're, we're trying to re obviously we're running out of landfill space we need to, to address that um organics produce uh what is it methane whatever but it basically they're they're a source of uh, greenhouse gases so we'd like to reduce that um it's agreed that the current system that we have is very unclear as to what your options are and what the rules are and so one of the strong arguments for a town contracted service is that we would have more say uh, over what gets done in our town related to waste and there'd be more transparency. 
uh, pay as you go, uh, pay pay as you throw fee structure is a best practice and will incentivize people. Susan, please. I just wanted to say that I can help with statistics. Um, Andy, is true. It, it is true that the um, thirty percent is the goal that in the solid waste master plan, but it's also true that. Um, Food material alone is 25% of MSW, and um, that a large portion of the state's waste is currently being transported out of out of state, which makes us very vulnerable in a lot of ways. Um, so um, I can get the more precise number a uh, percentage. I think it's more like 20% or um, 25% maybe that is currently being exported out of the state, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. uh, they expect that amount, that number, that percentage to increase over time. Okay. So let me know if you want that info Good. and I'll- I can reach out it. to you for that, but um, you should think it's 25% at mm -hmm. current, but I can check. Andy? No? Uh, <clears throat> I think, is that the only statistic I use here? I think that's, you know, somewhere, I know, 40, in number five. <clears throat> Maybe somewhat um, repet repetitive. I was I went back and forth on this one. Essentially, this is about just reducing what we put in our landfills. Um, in other words, again, it makes the claim that forty percent of what goes in the landfills is organics. So that includes yard waste, compostable products of all kinds, and food waste. George, so, don't, sorry, I'm sorry. I just want to, George, don't do you want to say here is to segregate all organics? Um, you, you just say collect. I mean, you don't really say that it should be collected separately. Um, to segregate, okay. separate, segregate. Okay. Separate or segregate. Um, okay. All right. Just something like that. Right. Um, it just, because right now we're collecting them. Uh, that is true. That is true. Um, at least some of us are, yeah. <clears throat> And just a comment, just an FYI, when yeah. we when it's when we say it's forty percent of the yeah. MSW, yeah. it is forty percent by weight. So that is even um, that's even more concerning if we are shipping it distance to um, to so dispose you're, of it. You're comfortable with that percentage? That that's you feel that's an accurate, relatively. I can double check, but yeah, that's that's pretty that's that's pretty much what um, what includes, is yeah, yeah. what okay. yeah okay. Um, and then finally, this is maybe somewhat controversial. I know Paul had some concern about this, um, a competitive bidding, bidding process. So I write can result rather than will result. <laughs> a competitive pro bidding process can result in lower cost to the consumer. Um, I think that is one of the reasons why we want to go to a contracted system. Um, but do you want to have it in here or do you want to take it out? Because we can't guarantee it. It's it's. Oh, possible. we have, well. Yeah. I have information from a number of communities in Massachusetts that show a, a, a per household cost to curbside collection. And I can, it is true that what people are paying now, it will be less. The question is how compost collection will impact right, it could that number. Bounce, right. Yeah. It, could, it could be a wash, but right. Paul? Well, I think my point is that if you're going to say it's going to cost less, it better cost less or else, you know, because I don't think you can guarantee that, especially people look at what they're paying today and then what they're going to be paying when this goes into effect, which is two years from today. Um, I just think you have to be very careful about promising cost savings unless you can actually, unless you, unless you say we're not going to move forward unless there's cost savings, which I don't think we're saying, but no, I think, you know, yeah. because you're going to be changing, there's a lot of different things that are going to change. So. Yeah, and you may right. go to every two week or whatever. So can you're not the the word can here <clears throat> isn't strong. You, you that doesn't uh, meet your objection. You might suggest just not putting it in here at all. Uh, well, it could be an increase or a decrease, right? Right. We just don't know till the market. I mean, the projection or the the evidence, as Susan said, could lead you to believe that. But I don't think we're not, we're not <laughs> I mean, promising it. We're just saying so much variability. Oh, I've seen, yeah, yeah, I've seen so much variability in pricing. And then labor costs lately, I would never go down that road. Thoughts of my, the rest of you? I think Paul is suggesting we take it out. Yeah, I agree. We should take it out. I think, 
I agree with Paul that it's we don't even want to Im infer or imply that we're going to get a cost reduction because we don't know. I think that the point really is that uh, having a competitive process helps assure that you have the best price at the time, yeah. but it does yeah. not assure that it's going to be less because we're in an industry where costs are inflating for varieties of reasons. Yeah, I think that's well put. So um, you could say yeah, I, the I, process uh, will ensure the best pro cost available at the time, or we could just take it out completely. Jennifer, are you thinking of, you like Andy's wording to keep it in, or do you want to take it out? Um, I I mean I don't know if we need to put it in. I think we're I think competitively that it is most responsible to competitively bid it to ensure that we have the best price we can get. I don't know if we want to put that in. Or we just leave That's it out. That's also a question of whether it will be competitive, but the... <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, if you have <laughs> right. So let's take it out. I'm going to take it out. I'm going to say to somebody, out. yeah, I'm going to take it out. Take it out. Okay. Why an RFP? Um, down below, I have a bunch of bullet points. Early at the beginning of the meeting, uh, people were taking certain things out, and I wasn't paying much attention. Um, can we just, can you just tell me what are things that definitely should come out of here um, in terms of uh, that, that an RFP won't tell us? An RFP will tell us, should give us a sense of cost to the consumer. Right, we we don't know what's going to cost. The RFP should tell us that cost to the town. Enforcement, however, should come out. Complaints, customer service. Yeah, it it'll it'll help us understand cost of enforcement or potentially. Uh, no, not it, uh, the question is who will handle enforcement. We get to decide that. I mean, right. Amherst gets to. I I say we because I'm an, a I'm a resident of Amherst, right. but Amherst gets to decide. Who's going to handle enforcement? Who's going to handle complaints? The RFP is going to tell us how much it's going to cost if we want the hauler to to handle those things. So I would I would just emphasize I would just focus on cost to the consumer and cost of the town. Um, because what additional services are available? You can ask for anything, and they will offer it to you at a certain price. The question is: Is it a, is it affordable for the town to accept it? So that it's not the existence of the RFP is not going to decide that. You guys are going to decide. We're going to decide what additional services mm -hmm. we want to ask for, and that's back again to my thought that part of the role of a consultant, if that's where we go, is to assist us in making those determinations. Because I know I'm in no position. To make some of these i need help. and to assist you in making an rfp so that yeah, that which exactly. is written such that you have a choice right, have in choices. in right. in what your final right. uh contract is yeah. yeah what we want ideally is a pick list right we can pick this we can pick this we don't want to pick that yeah. right me yeah, just stop for a second george how much more do you have because i'm trying to keep an eye on the clock now well, I understand, but I, I'm just going through the document, Andy. How much is left? <laughs> <laughs> Not much. Uh, yeah, so that... so I would also say uh, uh, the pays you throw structure structure also we can um, we can learn a lot from the haulers and what they already have, but they're not the ones that are going to determine the structure. Amherst is okay. So good. So the, a lot of this would be related to the notion of of the consultant assisting us. And some of it is the RFP will actually will give us answers to cost. But your point is, it's pretty much that's it. It's going to be the RFP. And MassDEP will be able to provide you with a lot of information about what other communities are doing and what their costs yeah. are, et cetera. Good. Okay. So the last thing, Andy, to answer your question is, and this is important, um, what we're asking the council uh, to address. And so I just list a series of, the first question is, do you agree that we should amend our current, we should move to some changes of our waste system? Secondly, should we have curbside composting of some kind or other? I'm wondering if three should just come out because we're not going to, I mean, that's not going to be, just, we're not going to determine that on, on the ninth. We just, you know, we're asking them to uh, agree with us that we should amend the process, that we should, it should include curbside, curbside, curbside composting um, and then uh, if you agree with us with that, 
um, would you vote to ask the town manager to issue an RFP? I would drop five. I don't think that's relevant at this point, and I can't think of anything else. Thoughts? Do we want to just? I'm sorry. Just a decision right. point. Yes. Yeah. Do we want to just um leave <laughs> question four? I mean, that's a we could spend the whole council meeting if we go through all those questions. Well, four would be a motion. There would be a motion in the motion sheet yeah. uh, that we're going to ask them to adopt if that's where we want to go. And and uh, but four would basically be assuming the answers to one and two are yes. Uh, the answer to three would be okay. There's a motion on it before you. Um, you know, we're going to bring it before you and have you vote on it. Yeah, I think maybe I would just go to there. I don't know if we have to go through all those questions. In other words, the next step would be uh, given this presentation, the argument we right. made. Um, we are now proposing a motion. Yes. Right. And they may ask those questions, exactly. but I think, right, yeah. Right, right, right. The motion is to... Yeah, uh, what is the motion? The motion is what we what we recommended months ago. Uh, well, we need to look at the language because I think at one point we were thinking of two consultants or a possibility of two consultants and where I'm at, and that's just speaking for myself, is we're really asking just for one at this time. We originally asked for one. Good. We so, asked for... Good. What we originally asked was, is the town manager issue an RFP? And the town manager said he needs a consultant to right. help him develop an RFP. So that, that it was, but, but the original request um, that we voted on as a committee was to request the, uh, the council ask the manager to issue um, an RFP. I mean, I think based on this excellent presentation, then we are asking, which really I think addresses questions one, two, maybe right. not, maybe I, I three. Right. So we're asking we're, for we're, this. We go to the motion. Yeah. We go to the motion, and I think I only my thought is quickly is the motion should include some language to the effect that this consultant is also going to assist TSO in in drafting a bylaw. And and and, and so I'm not sure that language was in the a motion from oh. before, but that should be included, and. Uh, Everyone, yeah. So there, that's that's it. I'm done. So um, let me just uh, do one other, ask one other, or question is that there were two documents that I had worked on separately. Um, are we continuing to include a um, the work plan with uh, as to how we would proceed through this process with? Uh, target dates understanding that they are be modified as appropriate do we still want that document before we go there can i just add one more thing george to your Please. excellent document i was just looking it over and in number two yep. i would suggest that the second sentence be changed to read something like Reducing Amherst's waste stream will help reduce the need for new landfills and incinerators and reduce future hauling and disposal costs and the emissions related to them or something like that. Okay. Can, yeah. If you would write, I, would you be kind enough to just uh, write that up and send it yep, to me? Yep. Um, yep. That would be great. Um, realize you all are trusting me to make some edits here that you're not going to see um, before September 9th. Um, though I could uh, send it to everybody just for FYI. Um, I don't know what the rules are on this. <laughs> um, I, I don't want to present something that does not reflect the consensus of the community of the committee. I think we're, we're pretty much in agreement. I think I have a pretty clear sense of where we're headed, but you are basically trusting me uh, under Andy's authority to make some edits to this and then You'll you'll see what happens on the ninth. Um, do you want me to send a copy of this in advance um, to everybody, Andy? Can I do that? Um, yeah, just, I mean, uh, I was going to try and uh, wrap things up by trying to um, say that that's normally what we what I have done, and I think we do as a committee, which is um, that whoever is responsible for the um, what's going to be sent to the council sends out a draft uh, to the committee, uh, people respond 
directly to that individual and uh, we, we changes get made as appropriate. Uh, frequently, we don't get comments, uh, but at no, least no, but, right. and a, a motion, the, the motion language should be in that doc. I would like to put the motion language in that document as well. So I will uh, consult with you as to that. Make sure I have that right. So that will be included. And Susan, thank you. And if you can send me uh, and, and I would add you in this list. As a matter of fact, I think it's OK if I include Susan uh, in this so she can have a look at it as well. Um, is that OK? Um, yes. I, OK. It's OK with me. Is, if, is it OK with Paul and Guilford? Yes. OK. okay. So I will, I will copy Susan as well. And as Andy said, people just send me comments uh, directly and individually. Um, and I will put them into the document. Okay. Um, just so you know, I'm going to be out of town. I'm going to be on vacation uh, starting on the 7th <laughs> through the 17th. So um, I will not be at the 9th, the meeting on the 9th. Or, you know, if you if you get it to me before, after the 7th, uh, I won't, won't be able to. This, this is good. We can blame this all on Hegner then. That's um, right. So when things go south, <laughs> we can say, well, that's, that's Hegner. He's the one who caused all this. <laughs> have a good uh, vacation bob I'm good okay so it. so let, let's uh so we can because we have a couple other things we want to get to um the uh work plan um i'm going to assume that we're going to keep that as a working document that will go to the council but i'll say, again ask for comments on it and the last question that I have is that I had started a document of answering questions. Do we want to continue with that document? And should, um, if so, I will, I will add to it and get comments that the thought is not to include that document because it's too much. Um, I'll drop it for now. Jennifer? Yeah, well, I think since uh, counselors were asked to submit questions, they should get responses. I don't know if it has to be, a, I think it's too much to get into at the next meeting, but so if there's a way of, oh, hmm. I, I don't know you, if you, I guess can you send it out meeting. in advance of the meeting yeah. so yeah, that go in the pack, they have, go in the pack. those who want yeah. to read it can? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and it would have to go in the public meeting packet, so. Yeah. No, and I appreciate Andy doing that. He took a lot of time and he went through yeah. them, many of them and he grouped them. And I, I think that is important. I think Susan's right, Jennifer's right. Colleagues deserve answers. If And so if we could put that in the packet in advance of the ninth, um, that would be good. Okay, then I will uh, add, add additional responses where they, because I ran out of time and send it to you and get your comments. Um, Paul, anything? I just say, need to say I'm gonna be signing off. I have to get it on another meeting now. Um, Thank just you. to let you know where we're, where I'm going to go is um, I was going to uh, ask it, and I'll just go to this topic right away. Um, the West Street proposal, um, it, the uh, just so that you know, because you've already seen the comments from DAAC, um, I got an email back from Myra Ross and Myra said, uh, we like the plan for making Potwine West Street intersection more accessible. I don't remember whether we took a vote, but there was no objection uh, to the plan, which we thought, um, and we thought it was very thoughtful. So we essentially have. Uh, the, uh, Andy, I'm, uh, I, have to, I have to sign off. So Gilbert is here for that. Okay. okay. So that's Sorry the other that. topic, Paul, so it's just, you yeah. know, where we're going. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Guilford, do you would it be helpful to for us to make a recommendation to the council now? Do you need have you uh, planned for when you would do this work? Um, right now would be a good time to make a recommendation. The work will probably start in October, late October at the earliest. So, if we could get the approval or the disapproval done, that would be great. And you saw the DAAC 
was supportive, but or not DAC, TAC was supportive, but had raised with Jason several issues about number of crosswalks and lighting at crosswalks, I think were several of them. Did you, uh, I don't know that we can do anything about that, but have you, did you have any comments on those things? Well, we're actually, we're, we're, the plan has for flashing beacons at the crosswalks. So the rectangular rapid flashing beacons will be at the crosswalks. Those are, that was something they were asking about. I think that's what they're alluding to. Um, they would like some additional street lighting, but I'm not sure we can actually install it because of the way the, <clears throat> the Eversource system is over there. And I think their other thing is really for future action is that they would like to look at speed limit again, but that's a different, a whole different process. Yes. George? So I'm prepared to make a motion. Um, I want to acknowledge the uh, the TAC report, which again was excellent and detailed. Um, and I, I hear the thought that some of these things are for future action. I hope they won't all get lost. Uh, that's certainly a job that we can also take on here at TSO in terms of, of the, the issue of speed limits in particular. Um, but I think I, I'm ready to make a motion uh, if the chair is willing to entertain it. Go ahead. So my motion would be that TSO approves the, uh, it recommends that the town council approve all the planned West Street uh, updates between Longmeadow Drive and Pot Wine Lane. <clears throat> second. Hey, motion's been made and seconded. Um, any further discussion on the motion? Seeing none, uh, let's go for vote, Council Ryan. Aye. Uh, Bob Hegner? Aye. Jennifer Tab? Yes. And I'm a yes. So it's four to, four to zero with one member absent that we are recommending that to the council for the September 9th meeting. Thank so you. we have. I see a hand in the audience. I don't know if you want to call it. Um. I don't think we can go back to public comment now because I really, uh, I think we've. Yeah, I think that public comment good. earlier and we want to conclude the meeting. We usually try and limit to two hours um, because the, the only other thing that I think that is an action item, um, which we could dispose of is the minutes of July 25th. 2024, which were presented in packet. Is there any comments on the draft of the minutes? If not, um, I'll start with the motion. And the motion is to approve the minutes for July 25, 2024, as submitted. I'll second. Motion has been made and seconded. A discussion. Councillor, we've got to vote. Councillor Ryan? Aye. Bob Hagner? Aye. Jennifer Taub? Yes. And I'm a yes. So it's four to zero with one member absent that we have approved the minutes. Um, and the other item, I think we're not going to be able to really spend time on if we're going to discuss. But uh, we were um, given a referral of uh, the Transportation Parking Commission charge and amendments. And uh, what I had said in an email to you that I didn't want to actually have discussion today but that if but it would be useful to know what information or um, we can have or need to seek in order to have that discussion at our next regularly scheduled meeting, in, which is in September. Uh, Bob? Yeah, the only issue I had with the whole idea was um, that some of the actions would require uh, the town to spend money. And I think that only the council can, uh, well, 
if it's within the budget of DPW or the town manager's budget, it's one thing. But if it requires an additional appropriation, I think only the, the town council can do that. So I don't know whether this uh, commission would have the authority to do that or not, or whether they could, everything has to be referred to the council for approval or not. So I think we need to clarify that. Okay. Um, Jennifer? Yeah, so I, I agree with Bob. I, so we will have a much fuller discussion about what would be within the purview of this commission and what we might be concerned not be. And just, you know, I'd like to talk through a little, you know, how items that have come before the council related to parking and transportation, have, how that would play out differently coming before the commission, if it had to go before the commission. I think that will be the discussion at yeah. the next meeting for the... And George? So this would be a major item, maybe the major item for our next meeting is what you're thinking. Um, how do you want it to present it? I mean, I'm just asking. Um, sometimes you assign somebody the task of presenting it. Um, the other way is simply we just start talking about it. This is a fairly complicated and uh, involved uh, uh, proposal, and it might uh, benefit from a, a fairly systematic uh, approach. I just I'm asking, um, or do people just want to? I mean, it'll be in our packet next time, both the, both documents. Um, so we'll have ample time to look at it and think about it. Um, do people want some sort of presentation and sort of systematic approach? Do they want to just jump in and uh, just, yeah? What does the chair think? Um, I think that one of the difficulties that I'm having with this is that uh, <clears throat> one of the, I think that this is a meeting where Tracy Zafian would be really helpful, but she has problems in frequently having work conflicts with this particular time at which we meet. And I have to see whether she's available. Uh, I'm just asking about how to approach it. It's just, it's got so many moving parts and so many moving pieces. Um, this is something that I think both uh, TAC and Paul um, are, are, are keen on. Um, we could ask them to present it or some, I just, I, how do you want to, I just asking my colleagues, asking you, Andy, um, how we want to go about this. Um, so we, it's efficient and we actually cover all the important bases because it's there's a lot in there. There is a lot in it. And uh, we I do have somebody make a presentation at the, like somebody at the take next meeting. Yeah. Um, that the, uh, they have given a lot of thought. I, I don't know if Guilford was involved in it. I know that Paul obviously has given a lot of thought to the question of um, how we can address these issues more efficiently than is currently happening. And uh, I think a key factor that has to be focused on too is that it was, it's a commission that would involve staff and you would bring, you would have staff or membership in it in addition. And so we would be giving up a certain amount of our role as TSO and um, TAC would be melded into this so that uh, it would be a, an ex a very different process. Uh, and the uh, question that we're trying to get at is, uh, is it right for us as a council, is it right for the town uh, to not, to, to have what decisions should be made by the elected board and what decisions can be more efficiently made by a commission that's not the elected board, elected council. So I guess what I'm proposing, and I know it's late and we got to get out of here, but um, I'd prefer to have somebody actually make the case for this. Um, and that could be Paul, it could be uh, Tracy, it could be Guilford, and, and they might say, no, we don't want to do it, that's fine. But otherwise, I think we're, we're just going to end up talking about this piece and that piece and back and forth. 
uh, I would like someone uh, to make a presentation to TSO, um, you know, as strongly as they could uh, uh, in support of this proposal. And then we can then start uh, figuring out what pieces uh, we want to focus on. Otherwise, I think we're just going to start talking about it. And I don't think that's going to be very productive. But maybe we'll make that request uh, to Paul and to see what he thinks. I don't know if you yes, want to. And, want any, and I will uh, include Tracy and okay. Guilford is hearing this anyway, but yeah. Guilford in the request that a presentation be made uh, as you have described. That's my thought. Yeah. Yeah. Jennifer? Could we submit questions just, you know, not just to you, if we, that you could pass on to them to include in the presentation? Yes. Okay, good. So that is how we will handle it. And I will uh, send something out okay. as a reminder to ourselves and to make sure that uh, Councilor Lord is brought up to date on what where we're going with this since she was unable to attend today. Okay. Yeah. Hey, so that said, um I think that there's anything else that uh is on the anticipated business. Is there anything else that anybody else wants to add? Otherwise I'll take a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. Second. It is motion was made and seconded. Uh, Councilor Ryan? Aye. Bob Agner? Aye. Jennifer Dowd? Yes. And I'm yes, so uh, we have adjourned at, uh, we'll just call a quarter after 12. Right. Thank you. This yeah. has been Thank a you. Very long, yeah. difficult meeting. Yes. Thank, Susan, thank, thank you, you for, for uh, contributing you. your time and expertise this morning. Yes. Thank you.